It's cold and it is dark and I'm so here for it. Anyone else who has heat intolerance from a chronic illness, we just feel like we're like rising from the dead right now. I'm so excited. I could not be more ready for fall. So a lot of my favorites are slightly fall inspired. So we got a lot of stuff, but hopefully I could be a little speedy today. The second it starts getting colder out, I whip out my favorite candle, which is Sweetwater Decor's Warm and Cozy. This has notes of orange, cinnamon, clove, and pine, so it smells really warm, and it has all of those fall spices that we know and love, but it also has the inclusion of pine, so it adds this like crispness and this freshness that really balances it out. Sweetwater Decor is one of my favorite candle brands, and they sell their products on Amazon, which is amazing. If you go on the site, you can also buy their products via Amazon Prime, directly from the website, which is great. The 11 ounce candles are about $24 and the nine ounce candles are $20. And this is the candle brand that has the most scents that I love with Warm and Cozy being my favorite. I lit this last night for the first time and John walked in the room and he was like, oh wow, it smells amazing. And that's just what happens every time someone walks into a room when this is burning. It is so good. I've been holding on to the little bottom of this one since last winter, but this morning I already placed an order for more. Yeah, I think that this is one of the most criminally underrated brands I've ever tried. I just, I can't say enough good things about this candle. It is so good. And the throw isn't too weak, but it's not too strong either. It's just like my perfect Goldilocks candle. All right, I'm gonna go straight into some Fit Glow new releases because Fit Glow is super nice and they've offered another exclusive 30% off coupon code that runs from October 5th until October 12th if you use the code Kate30. I predict we'll be doing this kind of partnership once a quarter. So if you've been wanting a place to Fit Glow order, now would be the time. This is definitely the highest discount that they offer. So this is a new release from Fit Glow and it's their Ultra Hydrating Cloud Hand Cream. And their website says, this ultra hydrating cloud cream restores, renews, and replenishes the skin. Skin loving cloud berry extract delivers brightening vitamin C and E while protecting collagen and restoring the skin barrier. Organic shea butter and sweet almond oil moisturize and soften the skin. What I love about this is, first of all, it comes in a pretty decent size for a hand cream and it has that incredible Fit Glow fruity smell that I love so much. I feel like it's watermelon extract and pomegranate extract. There's like a little bit of a freshness and a little bit of a tartness to it that I just think smells incredible. But what I love most about this hand cream is that it sets down to a satin finish. So I really, really, really don't like hand creams that leave your hands feeling greasy. And then I go to type on my computer and I'm just, my computer is like oily and gross. I hate that. It is the worst feeling in the world. It's pretty much why I don't ever wear hand cream, but this one is great. It's somewhere in between lightweight and rich. And I just think it's a great hand cream. I keep one at my desk and one in my nightstand. And what I'm wearing on my lips today is a new lip serum shade from Fit Glow. Well, the shade's not actually new. This is the Lip Serum in Cocoa, and it's actually a re-release of a product that was limited edition. So this is the same thing as the Lip Serum in Full, spelled F-U-L, which was from their beautiful collection where they had one that was B, an O, T, and a Full. It was like a very weird way of naming the products, but I'm super glad that they brought this back because this was by far one of my favorite shades ever from the Fit Glow Lip Serums, and they've had like 45 shades, so that says a lot. This is the perfect medium neutral brown. It's going to work on so many different skin tones. It's not quite as warm as the shade Root. It's not as cool toned as the shade Halo. It is just that perfect middle of the road brown. It works if you have more of like a fair or light complexion like I have. And it would totally work on you if you have medium to deep skin as well. It just, it looks good on everybody. And if you've been following along with the Fit Glow Lip Serum Smell Saga, they did change the distributor of the vanilla extract. So it's no longer smelling really floral. There's maybe just still like a hint of that floral quality, but when it's on my lips, I smell absolutely nothing. I don't smell the old earthy vanilla that they used to have. I truly just smell absolutely nothing. And honestly, that's kind of how I would prefer it. If you haven't tried the Fit Glow Lip Serums, I'll leave a video on the screen above where I applied, swatched, and compared every shade that they had at the time. And I did a very, very thorough in-depth review of it. But real quick, top line, I'll just say, these are one of my favorite products of all time. They are thick and cushiony, but they have this like buttery, slip to them so they're also very comfortable and lightweight but they also have a little bit of a grip to them so they don't slide around your mouth and they're packed with skin loving ingredients they have organic pomegranate plant sterols beet extract vegetable collagen and antioxidants and so they really do help to diminish the appearance of fine lines and help with the skin over time and that's one of the reasons why fit glow products are a little bit more expensive they actually create their formulas skincare formula first and then they add in mineral pigments so every product has a lot of active ingredients 
ingredients versus other companies that claim to be like a makeup skincare hybrid, but really start with makeup first and then add in a couple skincare ingredients at the end. Fit Glow is all about skincare first, makeup second. And I think that's why their formulas just perform so exceptionally well. So I'm thrilled that they launched the shade Coco. So now everybody could get their hands on this color. I think it's one of the best in the Fit Glow collection. Same thing goes for the Night Lip Serum. There's still a little bit of that like floral smell, but it is barely noticeable. And then when it's on the lips, like I said, I don't smell anything. So I'm really stoked to have a Night Lip Serum back in my collection again after having paused using it for the past two years because I really didn't like how floral it was smelling. I'm so glad that they figured out what was causing that and they found a solution without altering the feeling of the formula. Very, very, very grateful to have this back in my collection. And if you want to get 30% off Fit Glow, you can use my code Kate30 from October 5th until October 12th. And if you want to see a video where I reviewed every single Fit Glow product I had ever tried, you can click the video on the screen above. So I barely wore any makeup this month. I have a lot of skincare to get through. Oh my God, is there a ghost? That freaked me out. This is keep happening. Thanks. I have a lot of skincare to get through, so I'm gonna be fast, but there's a new brand called Prequel by Dr. Samantha Ellis. She's a dermatologist and also a pretty big content creator. And she launched an incredible skincare brand that has amazing value and great ingredients, all fragrance-free, safe for sensitive skin, safe for eczema-prone skin. And this is one of the best cleansers I've ever tried. This is called the Glenzer Non-Drying Glycerin Cleanser for face and body. The website says, a non-stripping face and body cleanser formulated with 50% glycerin inulin and a unique aquaporin stimulating active to boost skin suppleness. This skin softening, humectant rich glycerin cleanser effectively removes makeup, excess oil and impurities while maintaining skin's natural moisture barrier and pH. This is only $18 for a whopping 13.5 fluid ounces. It is as big as my head. You can use this on your face and your body, which I think is incredible. And it has the most interesting texture. I'll show you in the clip, but it is just, it's practically like snail mucin. It is so so incredibly hydrating. It just leaves the skin feeling bouncy and soft. It is the most unique cleansing experience I've ever tried. I just can't get enough of it. It's incredible. Also speaking of prequel, their latest launch is a moisturizer for face and body. And again, in this ridiculous size, this is also $18 for 10 ounces of moisturizer. And this is their barrier therapy skin protectant cream for face and body. So again, another amazing product that you can use on your face and your body to really help save money, to reduce the amount of products you need to buy, to just streamline your routine. And the website says a skin protectant cream for the face and body that alleviates minor irritation and itchiness due to dryness and eczema flare-ups. Formulated with a potent blend of colloidal oatmeal, multi-ceramide blend, and elantoin and adenosine, this soothing cream absorbs easily and provides relief to dry, distressed skin. This is really interesting because I thought it was going to be super rich. Anything that has colloidal oatmeal or says that it's a barrier support cream generally tends to be really rich and heavy, but this actually isn't, and I think that's great because that's going to be more appealing to a wider audience, but also if it's a little bit less rich than a normal barrier cream, then it would be a lot more spreadable on the body. And that's what I like about this. It's somewhere in between light and rich, and it has a whipped texture and a satin finish. So it's just really great as a multifunctional product for both the face and the body. And the way I use it is I like to add in two to three drops of this Paula's Choice Moisture Renewal Oil Booster with ceramides and argan oil, because a couple months ago I got a facial and the facialist said that I really needed to add some oils into my routine. And I really don't like the feeling of face oils on its own, but when you mix them into moisturizer, it feels great and it really doesn't bother me whatsoever. So any moisturizer I have, I just add two to three drops of this now and I have noticed a difference in my skin. I wake up with less crepiness under my eyes when I'm using an oil in my routine. And this is definitely my favorite that I've tried. It's $39 for 0.67 ounces. And the website says this concentrated antioxidant enriched booster relieves dry skin with a blend of pure nourishing plant oils and skin renewing ceramides. This is just a great face oil. It's not too greasy feeling. It's not too heavy, but it also doesn't feel like a dry oil. I just really, 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 really don't like face oils if you catch my drift here. So this has been great. It's fragrance and essential oil free. It just, I don't, I don't really know what else to say about a face oil, but I really like it and I have noticed a difference in my skin. And so whatever moisturizer I'm using, I just add two to three drops of this at night, but I don't do it during the daytime. And then lately after I do my moisturizer at night, I always do the slugging method and I've just been loving the one from Prequel. This is their Skin Utility Ointment Multi-Purpose Skin Protectant. This is $18 for two ounces and you only need a teeny tiny little 
little bit. I like this so much more than Aquaphor, Vaseline, or the CeraVe healing ointment. I just find this less greasy. It has bisbalol, 45% petrolatum, and their shielding polymer. So I just take a pea-sized amount of this at night and I rub it mostly on my forehead, on my eyelids, and under my eyes. Those are the areas where I tend to get the most dry throughout the night. And then any excess that I have on my hands, I just rub on the rest of my face and down my neck. And I don't wake up with dry, crepey skin in the morning anymore because of this and because of the Paula's Choice face oil. And also if you want an alternative, I've also absolutely been loving the Experiment Barrier. Oh shit, what is it? Hold on. Buffer Jelly, the Experiment Buffer Jelly as well. Somehow I have three more cleansers. This has just somehow been the month of cleansers and I have been really loving two cleansers from Renee Rouleau. This is the Vitamin Infused Cleansing Emulsion. This is my morning cleanser and this is the one that I use on dry skin first thing in the morning. This is $40.50 for six fluid ounces and the website says Vitamin Infused Cleansing Emulsion gently melts away makeup along with surface dry cell buildup to leave skin feeling soft, fresh, and dewy. They say that this is a first cleanse where you can melt away sunscreen and makeup, but I just really love the feeling of it first thing in the morning because it's got this like rich kind of luxurious hydrating milky texture, but it's like a thicker milky texture. And then once you add water and you emulsify it into the skin, it just turns into this kind of like watery milk and it just feels really satisfying. It's super moisturizing. So it just leaves my skin feeling really soft. And it's perfect for someone like me who both has sensitive and acne prone skin. So I do need to wash my face twice a day. And it does that without stripping my skin. I just really, really like the texture of this one. And the second Renee Rouleau cleanser I've just been hooked on is the Moisture Protecting Cleanser. This is also $40.50 for six ounces. And the website says, Moisture Protecting Cleanser is a unique gel to milk formula for dry, damaged, and sensitive skin types to give the most gentle cleansing experience. This one's really nice. It comes out like this thicker gel formula. And then when you emulsify it into the skin, it just turns into this like oil milk kind of feeling. And it's so luxurious. Honestly, my whole life, I have just thought that it's not worth it to spend anything more than $15 on a face cleanser because CeraVe makes really great basic ones. But honestly, this year my mind has kind of been changing on that. And I really feel that splurging on some really nice cleansers that feel luxurious and give me a kind of like sensory experience really does make an impact in a small way on my day. And even though I got these cleansers in PR, I absolutely see myself purchasing them when they run out. I just feel like they're so great on my skin and I just really, really enjoy the experience of them. Mm, I just, I love them. I love those cleansers. The last Renee Rouleau product I've really been loving is the Triple Berry Smoothing Scrub. Normally I just stick with, you know, my tretinoin and my retinoid and I don't really use a lot of chemical exfoliants or physical scrubs, but there are just some days when you want a physical scrub. And it's really hard to find the right formula because a lot of them can be just way too harsh or there's like too many particles and it really hurts the skin. Or some scrubs have like very perfectly gentle rounded beads that I feel like don't do anything at all. This is somewhere in the middle. I feel like it's got more of those soft rounded beads, but there's a lot of them. So it really gently physically exfoliates my skin without ever making it feel irritated or sensitized. This this is $51.50 for 1.7 ounces, which I feel like is a ridiculously high price point. So I definitely don't like that aspect of it, but this is my favorite facial scrub that I've ever tried. And a close second for me is the Peach and Lily, man, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the powder that comes out and then you add water. That's my second favorite. But right now, this is the one that I've been loving and I'm almost out of it, unfortunately. I don't know if I'm gonna repurchase this just because it is $50 and I feel like that's really expensive for such a small container, but it has undoubtedly been a favorite of, well, really of the past several months and I've just forgot to talk about it. Okay, a product I wanted to hate so badly so I could come on here and shit talk it is the Charlotte Tilbury water cream. And unfortunately, I love this shit. They sent me this full size and a mini size and I already used up the mini size, which was $30. And the full size is $100 for 1.7 ounces. So same amount of product in both of these containers. By golly, leaping lizards, I love this so much and I'm gonna be so mad when I run out of it because it's so expensive and I honestly don't think I'm gonna purchase this because I did receive this for free in PR. I cannot justify the cost of spending $100 on a moisturizer, but if you've been eyeing this and it's in your budget or you've been wanting to, you know, give a gift to someone, I did just wanna pop on here and say that this is really, really good and I love it and I'm so angry that I love it and I'm so angry that it's so good because it's so expensive, but it's also very basic, but I still really love it, so I'm conflicted. Anywho, the website says a bouncy, weightless, fragrance-free gel water cream that immediately drenches the skin in hydration, refines the look of pores, and visibly reduces redness over time. It has niacinamide, a water-locking fusion technology, and a biopeptide 
complex. Normally gel creams don't work out for me because they're way too light and they dry down and they make my skin feel almost more dehydrated than before. But this is the kind of gel cream that's also like mixed with like a, a richer fluffy cream, which is such a good texture for me for the daytime. It does have a little bit of a dewy finish and I'm wearing it today with a couple other dewy products. So my skin's a little bit more dewy than I like it, but this is just phenomenal. It's so bouncy and whipped and it's lightweight on the skin and it's so thin and it's so spreadable, but it is deeply hydrating and it's the perfect level of occlusiveness for daytime for me. It's not too light to the point where I feel like my skin's really dry. Damn it, it's good. Damn it, Charlotte Tilbury. My friend Stephanie of Beauty Unhyped recently talked about a dry shampoo that has changed my life. It's so good. Oh, it's the I Do Care Tap Secret Mattifying Dry Shampoo Powder. Now, I have always known that non-aerosol dry shampoos are the best way to clean the hair. Aerosol dry shampoos, while I like a lot of them, like Moroccan oil is my favorite, they can leave the hair feeling a little bit, um, a little grittier or a little like dirtier. Even when the hair looks cleaner, it just sometimes feels a little bit like there's a lot of product buildup in there. But non-aerosol dry shampoo powders clean the hair without weighing it down or without adding any texture. And I much prefer that because I feel like the hair feels cleaner that way. But a lot of the times with some of my favorite non-aerosol dry shampoos like the Kristen S or the Odell, Briogeo, Chlorine, they all have like a pump mechanism where you either squeeze the bottle or you pump the top. And inevitably it either dispenses way too much product if it's in like the Briogeo or the Chlorine bottle, or if it's in the pump, it inevitably gets stuck and then you can't get any product out. So this is the perfect solution. It just is a dry shampoo powder with a powder puff on top. Now, if you're on a budget, by all means, you could just use baby powder or um, translucent facial setting powder, whatever, you know what it's called, powder any powder, I think. And you could just use a brush or a powder puff and then put that in your hair. So you can totally do this on a budget. But this is only $10 on Stylevana. So for me, that's a really great affordable price point. And this is so fantastic at cleaning the hair. There's no fragrance. It's so affordable. My friend Stephanie, who recommended it to me, has black hair. And so it works on all different hair colors and hair types, and it doesn't leave a white cast. I know Crown Affair has something similar, but it's so much more expensive than this. So this baby, my new number one. I have found one of the best mineral sunscreens of all time and I have one of you to thank for it. Someone DM'd me over the weekend that I had to try the Clear Stem UR Sunshine Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Plus. This is $42 for 2.1 ounces and it's an antioxidant rich, ultra sheer, weightless and scentless tinted sunscreen with SPF 50. It contains calming botanicals for a velvety finish and a beautiful blurring effect. This has 21% non-nano zinc oxide and it's safe for acne, rosacea, dryness, discoloration. It has green tea. Go to cola and horse chestnut to calm the skin, stimulate collagen, and reduce the look of scars and dark spots. It's so good. I've been looking for an SPF 50 mineral sunscreen with a high amount of zinc oxide for ages and ages, and all the ones I found are always either really, really dewy or they're really, really thick, and they just make you feel like you're wearing a mask because, you know, zinc oxide is like very thick. This one... I don't know how they did it. It's witchcraft, it's magic, it's from the future. I don't get it, but it's amazing. It's the perfect tint for my skin. It's a teensy bit dewy. I would say that it has a velvet finish, but like a velvety, slightly dewy finish on me personally. I think that's the reason why I keep having to powder today with my skin tint. So I do still prefer the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30 underneath makeup, because that one's a soft matte finish and my skin gets really oily when I wear makeup. But when I'm not on camera and I don't have to be under these lights that make my face look shinier, this is just gonna be my go-to. I'm probably just gonna finish up a lot of my other sunscreens and then just use this in the Paula's Choice because I mean, this is SPF 50 and it has so much zinc. It's perfect. It hits every single category that I need it to hit. I'm, I'm blown away, blown away. And I'm so glad that someone DM'd me about it. If that was you, Thank you. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Really quickly, I just wanna talk about what's on my cheeks right now. Bare Minerals sent me this highlighter and it's the best powder highlighter I've ever used and like I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So I wanted to just share that the Gen Nude Highlighting Blush in Opal Glow is ridiculously pretty. The highlighting blushes are $26 and they come in five shades. The website says a two-in-one blush and highlighter that combines the rosiness of a blush with the lit from within glow of a highlighter in one step. Now, I don't like that approach and 
and that's why I like this shade, although this is the only shade they sent me, so I can't really compare. But either way, this is just my perfect highlighter formula and color. Color-wise, it's like a champagne mixed with a tan, mixed with a pink, which is pretty much my exact same skin color. But it also gives you this gorgeous shine to the skin with zero glitter, zero chunkiness, and because I have this in my collection, I am now going to declutter the Laura Mercier Baked Highlighting Powder in, um, I don't know if there's a shade name. I think it was just like 01. I liked that product, but I felt like occasionally it would break up foundation a little bit, and this one doesn't do that. This one is so beautifully skin-like while still giving a good amount of shine to the skin. I think it's so pretty. Let me zoom you in. So that's Opal Glow on my cheekbones, and it just looks like a gloss, but it's a powder. Oh, so pretty. It just, it feels totally dry like a powder and just looks unbelievable on the skin. I cannot get over how pretty this is. This is criminally underrated and I really, really think that more people need to try this because Bare Minerals has amazing cheek products. They've always made amazing powder products and I just think that more people need to try this one. And if you do, let me know your thoughts because I'm just like, how have people not been talking about this? It's so good. On most days I've been reaching for that highlighter because it's new in my collection and I always want to reach for the thing that's new. But the second newest product that I reach for as a highlighter that I am totally hooked on is the Say Glow Sculpt in Pink Glow, which is a similar shade, but this is a little bit lighter, but both have a little bit of a pink quality to it that goes really well with the cool undertones in my skin. I love this because it's a cream powder hybrid formula, which are some of my favorites because you get the skin-like quality and the blendability of a cream, but you get the longevity and the control of a powder. And I really don't like using highlighters that are super liquidy because I feel like I'll add a little bit and then I'll blend and all of a sudden I'm blending and blending and I'm having to blend over more places than I really want. But if I have something that has either like a thicker cream quality or a powder or a cream powder hybrid, then I can just apply the highlighter right where I want it. And I know that no matter how much I'm blending it, it's not gonna be blending out all over my face. And I just adore the Say Glow Sculpts because again, they add this like metallic shine to your skin without any type of glittery quality to it. It doesn't even really look like you're wearing a highlighter. It just looks like beautiful, healthy skin. And Pink Glow is definitely my favorite. This is the one I use as a highlighter, but I love Peach Glow and Mauve Glow just as much. And I use those as blush. Damn, just like some really, really good cheek products coming out lately. Speaking of cheek products, ever since I got this, literally since the day I received this in PR, I have worn it. This is the Rudy Berry and Bubel Berry Freckled Pen. I'm wearing it on the tops of my cheekbones and my nose right now. I feel like this just really finishes a look. And it's funny because I've spent so much money trying to correct all of the hyperpigmentation and the sun damage that I've gotten throughout my life, especially in my 20s. And so you would think that I would want my skin to look just perfectly even and like baby porcelain smooth, but I don't. I really now love the addition of just very subtle freckles. I don't like when it's like a spray across the face. I feel like when people go a little overboard, it can look quite unnatural and a little dirty. So I really blend these out now and I'll show you up close. So I'm actually naturally really freckly and I just add them back in because my foundation products always cover them up. But I just like to add a little bit of the freckles back onto my face because I feel like it makes the skin actually look a lot more natural. For me, it's kind of the same theory in practice that Violette FR always talks about. When she applies a foundation, she leaves her nose out to make it look a lot more natural. So it's kind of similar. I do also leave my nose out from foundation and skin tints. I just find that adding freckles back onto my cheeks and nose does make it look like I'm not wearing foundation. And I think that it just is a beautiful addition to my makeup routine. I think it's sold out right now, but I believe they're gonna do another drop of this at some point. The only eyeshadows I've worn this month are the Merit Solo shadows because I created so much content doing wear tests around these, so I got to know them thoroughly. I gave away the shade Vachetta because I just didn't feel like it was really gonna stand out in my collection. It was a little bit too yellow for me, but I've kept the shades Studio and Mid-Century and I love them. This is quite a polarizing product, but this really works for me. I have dry eyelids, so that might be why I don't find them to fade or crease as badly as some other people. But I did get a few comments from some of you guys with oily lids and you also said that you found this to be really long wearing. So, you know, it might just depend on a variety of factors. These are really similar to something like the MAC Paint Pots. They start out as a cream and then they set down to a kind of budge proof powder. Comparatively, I do prefer the Paint Pots because I find that you have more blend time with those before they set. And I like the glass container better. It's easier to open and close and I find that the product doesn't dry out as fast as these. But I prefer the colors of the Merit Solo Shadow 
eyebrows and at first you get this really thin emollient cream and I would work one eye at a time because these set really quickly. And then once you're done blending, they set and they do not budge. I do find that where my eyes are slightly hooded, that's where these tend to crease a little bit, but you can't tell when my eyes are open. So to me, it really is not a big deal. And if I wanted to just like rub it in with my fingers, I could and it's no problem. I've done multiple wear tests for these and I find that by the end of the day, my eyeshadow pretty much looks freshly applied unless I close my eyes, then you can see a little bit of creasing, but it's pretty impressive for a cream for me. I do tend to get a lot of creasing throughout the day, no matter what kind of product I use, even if it's a powder. So I have to say, I'm very impressed by these. The only thing I didn't like about them is the marketing around this campaign. I feel like it was very condescending. I've already talked about that in a new makeup video that I'll leave on the screen above. You know, with the, the launch of this product, I feel like they were kind of talking down to people saying, we know eyeshadow palettes are way too confusing for your brain. Like you should switch to the Merit Solo shadows because we'll make it easy for you. It just felt very condescending. So it makes me feel like they were marketing those campaigns towards people who are not eyeshadow wearers. Otherwise that campaign comes across just like really condescending. So I think that they were really going for people who just maybe wear like a little mascara, a skin tint and a little bit of a lip and call it a day. And then that marketing campaign makes more sense to me. But for those of us who are in the beauty industry or adjacent to it or are just makeup wearers, I feel like it was like a little bit of a strange way to launch your product, especially saying that it's like this groundbreaking formula that it's gonna change the way you look at eyeshadow. No, 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 no. It's just a cream to powder formula. These have been around forever. They're just like the MAC paint pots. I just, yeah, I don't know. The Sometimes the marketing of Merit's products really bothers me. And I also know that the founder wasn't really a makeup wearer to start. And so when someone launches a beauty brand who really isn't much of a makeup wearer, that kind of irks me a little bit. But I mean, some of Merit's products are really good. And so I can't be mad at that. I really like this. I just wish that they had kind of adjusted the messaging. And the base product I'm wearing today is the new CL Tint and Protect SPF 50 Tinted Serum, and I have the color Fair 02. This is $44 for 1.28 fluid ounces, and it's a mineral SPF 50 plus weightless tinted serum that blends into a seamless second skin with buildable light to medium coverage and a natural finish. It has a lantoin to moisturize and soothe the skin, bisabolol to calm and brighten, and niacinamide to boost the skin barrier and help minimize the look of pores. So I had seen online some reviews that people felt this was a really gimmicky product and that you're not getting any sunscreen coverage, you'd have to apply so much product in order to actually get the SPF 50 in it. And that was really rubbing people the wrong way. And I've seen like so many angry reviews about the launch of this brand. I feel completely differently because for me, the CL products that launched are so good in terms of the formula that they're incredible standalone products without the sunscreen aspect. So to get a little extra protection, even if the amount I'm applying only gives me SPF 10, I'll take that extra SPF protection. So personally, I think that this is a great idea. I'm someone who never reapplies sunscreen and I'm so ashamed to say that because, you know, we YouTubers are supposed to be like all on top of our shit, but goddamn, I do not have time in the day to like reapply my sunscreen when I'm wearing makeup. And this is just a really good way to do it because I could just add a little bit more coverage where I need to. I can add a little bit of the blush and that gives me a little bit of sunscreen protection. So that's my feeling on it. I love this. This to me is not even really a skin tint. It's more of like a serum-y foundation. One dropper full gives me medium coverage and I think that's incredible. I don't like light coverage products because I do have quite a bit of acne and redness. And on me, this does set to a natural to slightly dewy finish. When I powder this, the oils will come through pretty quickly, but then it stays that way and I don't get super oily throughout the day. So this works beautifully with powder. It looks skin-like. It doesn't emphasize texture. It just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful foundation. So personally, I love this product, whether it has mineral sunscreen or not, but as someone who can only use mineral sunscreens. I'm so excited to have some makeup products that do have mineral sunscreen in them that I know is not going to sensitize my skin because I have quite a strong reaction to chemical sunscreens. So I'm stoked on this brand. I'm also just so hooked on the Blush and Protect SPF 50 Plus. I have the shade Bahati, which is a very muted, uh, dusty pink. And again, this would be one of my favorite liquid cream blush formulas, even if it didn't have the sunscreen, which is why I'm so excited about CL. I love for this kind of formula that it has a doe foot applicator because I can just Boop, 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 apply and go. It blends like a dream. It's a perfect cross between a liquid and like a very whipped kind of moussey cream. So it just has that blendability that you want in a cheek product that prevents it from being patchy. I do find that cream and liquid cheek products on me do fade quite quickly, which is why generally I reach for powders most of the time. But this is the blush I've been wearing nonstop because I just love how skin-like it is, how blendable it is. It's so fast to apply. And even though it does fade a little bit, it's not an issue because 
I can just reapply throughout the day. And I do also notice it at the end of like an eight hour wear test, it is still there. So this is just an incredibly impressive formula. And I will drop in my wear test for both products here. Let's start with CL. I think the skin wore beautifully throughout the day. Obviously the blush and the skin tint faded very naturally as any makeup item would by the end of the day, but it never got overly dewy or oily like a lot of base products can make my skin look by the end of the day. The only thing I'm noticing about CL Cosmetics is that it's kind of breaking up and looking a bit crusty and dry around my chin. So I think you can see here, it's just starting to get a little bit dry looking. And honestly, you can only see it super close up, so that doesn't bother me at all. The blush definitely faded by the end of the day, but I would usually reapply blush anyways. This is just how it looks without any kind of touch-ups, so I think that's all fine. I'm gonna take a little makeup break. Let's talk fragrance, and I have three perfumes I've been wearing nonstop. One of them is an old favorite, which is Jo Malone's Vetiver and Golden Vanilla. This to me is very much like a cool weather fragrance. There's something about this that smells really cool and crisp to me, while also being a very warm kind of gourmand and spicy fragrance. There's there's this really interesting dichotomy between the warm and the cool notes in here that just provides this incredible scent experience. In fact, I think I need to spray a little bit right now because I could use this. Oh. Oh, it just smells so good. Mm. Vetiver and Golden Vanilla is the Cologne Intense from Jo Malone. A lot of times, I don't really like Jo Malone fragrances because they fade literally after 30 minutes and they're like gone from my body. Not with this. This is the Cologne Intense and to me, it's the perfect middle ground. Like it's not overpowering, doesn't give me a headache, but this is the kind of fragrance, probably one of the more longer lasting, one of the more powerful fragrances in my collection. And the website says, the coast of Madagascar, rich with orchid filled jungle in green fields of tall grass. From its roots, vetiver emerges, its earthy depths warmed by vanilla bourbon with an aromatic touch of lavender, bountiful and delectable. Fragrantica says the notes are vanilla, vetiver, cardamom, tea, and grapefruit. And that black tea is something that I really smell. And I think that's the like cool crispness maybe. Yeah, I think it's the tea combined with the grapefruit. That's that like cool, crisp freshness. Then the cardamom's really spicy. The vetiver is really woody. And then the vanilla is like warm and gourmet. On. There's just, there's a lot going on in here, but not in like an overwhelming way in just a beautifully balanced, very unique signature scent kind of way. And I just, I just, I smell, I like feel my best when I wear this. I love it so much. Skylar sent me a couple perfumes to try and two of them became favorites. The first is Lime Sands, which I will definitely be putting away for this season because it's, it's much more of a kind of summer, spring, summer scent. But they describe this as a bright, zesty margarita in a bottle scent, energizing lime and refreshing coconut water transports you to white sandy shores under the sun. Let the fresh sea breeze brush along your skin as you get lost in paradise. So the notes are coconut water, lime, and sea salt, and it's just, it's really lovely. I would not get this if you're looking for something that's citrus forward. This is much more of a coconut scent to me. I would say coconut water first, then you get that like salty air kind of vibe. You know when you buy a candle that's like ocean, like it smells like the ocean, that's what this smells like in terms of the sea salt. So it's like ocean candle, plus coconut water, and then there's like a hint of lime. I wouldn't say this is margarita in a bottle. Like that lime really does not come through to me. It's so much more like ocean breeze and coconut, but I love it. it smells great, so I'm not complaining. A very similar one that I fell in love with is Salt Air from Skylar, and the notes are driftwood, seaweed, and sea salt. The website says, Salt Air is the fragrance of a perfect seascape with notes of sea salt to give you a fresh out of the water feeling. Grounding driftwood and green seaweed mingle with light floral notes of water lily for a perfume that smells of endless summers and breezy beachy days. So to me, lime sands and salt air smell almost identical, but this one has coconut in it, whereas this one smells like exactly like an ocean breeze kind of candle. I don't necessarily smell seaweed, which is a good thing because I don't like seaweed, but yeah, just smells like the, a kind of like ocean candle that smells really good. I think this is a year round fragrance, even though it's like transporting you to these beaches. It's just something that to me is just like very crisp, very fresh, very, very clean. That's what it is. It smells very clean. That's what I'm picking up on. Okay, so I would say that's what I was missing out on. It's like clean laundry plus an ocean candle. And I really like that. I think it's appropriate for year round use. It's, it's really nice. Quick little 
lip topper with Fit Glow Cocoa. The minute the weather got colder, I whipped this bad boy out, which is a recent purchase of mine in the past couple months. This is the Les Fion Rouge Le Balm BB, and BB is the shade name. It's basically a sheer matte lipstick, so it's kind of like the Glossier Generation G, but I much prefer this formula, and I also think the packaging is so much more my style versus Glossier Generation G. This color is the perfect warm brown for the fall months. I think it is stunning. It's comfortable on the lips. There's a little bit of that like powdery feeling on the lips, but it's still also balmy and it feels really weightless on your lips. So it's just a beautiful formula. BB is definitely my favorite shade out of the two I bought. And what's nice is I don't own any other color like this in my collection. This warm brown for me is more of like a slightly yellowy, slightly orangey brown, just compared to all the other browns I have, which are either like a reddish brown or a pinky brown. This one is just a different kind of undertone of a warm brown. So I really am enjoying having this in my collection. I've been wearing it a lot this week. I'm so excited because M Cosmetics launched three new shades of the Soft Spoken Velvet Lip Creams, which is one of my all time favorite creamy, velvety, comfortable, balmy, matte liquid lipsticks. I did not love their original shade range. Everything pulled really peachy and really orange on me. Even the colors that were described as berry ended up looking really peach. So the new shade range is fantastic and my two favorite shades are Hush and Flirt. This is an extremely comfortable, blurring, balmy, matte kind of whipped cream formula. And what's cool about these is when you first apply them, they have this like glossy finish, but as you blend it, it like turns into this powder finish, which is really cool. I find these much more comfortable than the MAC Powder Kiss liquid lipsticks. Those really dried my lips out, but these don't. These have a little bit of a subtle sweet smell. I can't put my finger on what it is, which is how you know it's really subtle. It's just kind of like, like a sugary caramel candy. I'm gonna be reaching for these non-stop, and I'm so excited that they expanded the shade range. One thing I really like about this too is they design Designed the applicator to mimic the feeling of a fingertip on the lips. And I think this applicator was brilliant. It really does feel like you're just rubbing something in with your fingers. It's such a great product. The lip product I've been wearing the most in September is the Nature Republic Honey Melting Lip. And I wanna thank a subscriber for recommending this to me. They are amazing and they are definitely gonna be in the top winner category of my upcoming glossy melty lip balm video. These are quite pigmented and they're also thicker and a little bit stiffer compared to a lot of other like melty lip products that come in this kind of component. And you know what I'm gonna say, that thicker quality to them, I find just adds this like glass-like shine to the lips, really smooths over lip lines, makes your lips appear a little bit more youthful. And I just find that kind of finish and that kind of formula to be ultra comfortable and ultra flattering. I can't put my finger on what the smell is exactly. It's some kind of like apricot or peach candy. And I find it really pleasant. These are almost exactly the same formula as the Roman Glasting Melting Bombs, but these are a little bit stiffer and a little bit thicker. So with these, I find that I really need to like melt them into the lips in order to get that glassy finish and they're just extraordinarily comfortable. They're also only $8.10 on Yes Style, although I did find that it was worth paying a little bit extra, like a couple dollars each more through the Nature Republic website because I was able to get that package shipped to me really quickly. Whereas Yes Style sometimes can take a long time to ship. So, you know, kind of just depends on what your preference is. If you want something cheaper, go for Yes Style. If you want something faster, just buy through the Nature Republic website. And of course, I have to talk about the Galactic Jello Gloss Bombs. If you missed my Galactic brand review, I'll leave that linked on the screen above. And the Jello Gloss Bombs were by far the winner from that. These are also very similar to the Nature Republic Honey Melting Lip, the Roman Glossing Melting Bombs. These are a little bit stiffer as well, meaning unlike the Nature Republic Honey Melting Lip or the Roman Glassing Melting Bomb that really like melts over the side of the container, the Galactic Jello Gloss Bombs are stiffer, so they hold their shape. So you can put it in a chapstick component and you can twist them back down. But they do still kind of melt over the sides of the product, but it's just a little less messy than some of the like really, really thin glossy ones. They're all very similar products, but I would say this one's a little stiffer and a little less glossy, whereas the Honey Melting Lip is very glossy, almost has like a wet finish on the lips. Kind of depends what you're looking for, but I'll do the comparison in that upcoming video. These have a bit of a grape candy smell, even though it's advertised as pink lemonade, it's grape candy. Like, trust me, I've had so many people DM me to validate that. And I think it smells really nice and nostalgic. My favorite shades are Au Naturel and Barely Nude, but I wear all of the shades and I love them all. And they also have a clear unisex version with a peppermint smell called the Unisex Jello Bomb that my partner John has in his office and we both use and love it. So been reaching for these nonstop. Lastly, for lips, I am totally hooked on the Roman Juicy Lasting Tints and these are my favorite 
shades. My favorite colors are Fig Fig, Almond Rose, Peeling Angdu, and Bear Fig. I actually have other favorites, but I decided to just narrow it down to four <laughs> because this video is long enough. These are not the most pigmented nor the most staining out of lip tints, lip stains that I've tried. I would say if you want something that's like really long lasting and pigmented and stains the lips, go for the Fenty Poutsicle Hydrating Lip Stains. Those are amazing. These, I just really, really like the colors that they launched because they come in like a hundred different colors on Yes Style. They have a bunch of different collections you can sort through. There's so many different YouTubers who have done content so you can, you know, really find the best swatches for you. So I like that these have more like medium pigment to them. They stain the lips a little bit, but they're not like aggressively staining. I like to put a little bit of a lip liner down first. Then I apply this. I let it sit for a bit and then sometimes I'll even blot it and add a gloss on top or you can leave it as is or rub it into the lips for more of like a blotted effect. They're just so beautiful and I think that Roman just really does color so brilliantly. These do have quite a like chemically artificial fruity scent but what sits on the lips I honestly don't really notice it after a minute so it's not bad. I'm buying lots and lots of K-Beauty lip tints and lip stains to test out but so far out of the five formulas I've tried this is my favorite. And lastly I've talked about these products so much on my channel I'm gonna keep it real quick. All of these concealers have been my favorites for the month of September as I did, you know, my new concealer video and new launches. I really, really became familiar with these formulas and adore them. The one I'm wearing today is my favorite. Still nothing beats it and I get questions all the time. You know, now that you've tried this concealer, does that overtake Fit Glow as the number one? No, nothing ever will. Don't even ask the question. It is always going to be Fit Glow. I'm going to save you time here and if you want to watch my new concealer video, I review a bunch of new formulas and I compare them all to Fit Glow so you can watch that on the screen above, but it goes Fit Glow number one, the Live Tinted Hue Skin Serum Concealer number two, House Labs number three. And I just think that these are fantastic formulas. These are the ones I've been rotating out nonstop. And I'm so excited to now have a couple other concealers I can use and recommend for you guys besides the Fit Glow. So really stoked that brands have been coming out with some beautiful, blurring, hydrating, skin-like full coverage concealers. Wow, 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 wow. That was a lot to get through. I don't know if I have it in me to do my September fails after this, but we'll see. Don't forget, if you're interested in placing a Fit Glow order, you can get 30% off with my code Kate30, October 5th to the 12th. So it's gonna run for a full week. This isn't sponsored or anything. The code's just there if you wanna use it. I'll leave a video on the screen if you wanna keep watching my content. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more thorough, honest, detailed reviews. And wherever you are, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day.